you hate the thought of working past 55 or 60? Do you hate not being able to live the life you deserve today? Do you hate not knowing what your financial future looks like? It's time to stop doing what you hate. Here's your host, Mr. Harold Green. Hello, everyone. Harold Green here of Bright Tree. I hope you are having a fantastic day. I'm doing pretty good. Looking forward to sharing today's show with you folks. And uh, I don't know. I thought about this and, um, you know, I'm going to put it out there as carefully as I can because I don't ever want to put anybody in a situation where they're kind of mad at me for something I said. But sometimes I can't help it. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you to buckle up a little bit because this is going to be a, a pretty serious show. And I'll get into it in a second, but I talk, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about my week and um been having a good week so far. I'm here in Hawaii, seeing clients, seeing as many people as I can see. Schedule is jam-packed. It's just exciting to see everyone, give people hugs and stuff, people that I haven't seen in a while. And um it's just been really good reconnecting with my bright tree ohana right here in Hawaii. And my mission, again, is to help you get from where you are today to where you want to be. And we've been really talking heavily about the 3% group. However, 3% is not the end. There's the top 2%. There's the top 1%. But the reason why we're talking about the top 3% of all the people in the United States who can retire with enough to live on for the rest of their entire lives and also be a blessing to others is because if you crack the code, of getting into the top 3%, it's 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 a pretty neat ride to the top 1%, but you got to get there first. And just like just getting there is one of the hardest things, right? Just getting to the top three, even getting to the top 10. I mean, once you start getting through levels, it, it just begins to open up and there's clearer sailing and uh, clearer skies at the at the top. You know, there's it's not crowded up there at all, but it's it's hard getting there. You know, there's a lot of things that will prevent you. There's a lot of gates that are blocking you. And I want to talk to you folks a little bit about one of those things that 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 had me strung up for a long time. And the title of today's show is Turning Weakness into Money. And if I could have a subtitle, that would be barriers that are <laughs> or barriers that are blocking the gate to the three percent like there's some serious barriers out there and hurdles that you're going to have to overcome and many of them i'll be honest with you are right between your two ears it's in your head and i want to talk to you about a mental disorder that i had as a you know growing up that that i got from childhood that really just it really ruined my life and there's two things I could, you know, I had two pathways to, to try to fix this once I found out about it. Either I could find a spiritual fix or I could have went to see some psychologist for a natural or a mental fix or a man-made fix or some sort of professional, professional help. And, and due to this issue, I'm telling you, I went through a lot of things as a kid. But before I get into it, I just want to say, one, two, three, let's get it. <laughs> In one of my shows titled Biscuits to Business, I talk about how as a young person, I was kind of put in charge of opening up one of the, the top income grossing Burger Kings in the United States as a 16-year-old. Now, most 16-year-olds I know are not getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning driving 45 minutes to an hour each way to get to a job to open up a restaurant right three o'clock they just went to bed <laughs> now they're up on tiktok and all this stuff right but i had to because i i had to survive right we we needed money you know and i'm not ashamed to say when i was growing up we didn't have a lot but if i wanted clothes for school Right. If I had, if I wanted money for gas to put in my car, I had to work for it, you know. And a lot of times I had to help my mom out with stuff because of our family situation. And so I ended up getting 
what they call the the savior complex, right? And and I, I read into this, and it was you know, it's a it's about the uh, parentification of young people. At an early age, I was like taking care of siblings and being responsible for a lot of stuff that most kids, you know, they they just have a playing with toys and you know hanging out with friends. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of that, so I grew up with a distorted view of almost having to be responsible for for anything, and that that was my greatest weakness because I I didn't know when people were taking advantage of me. My wife said, you know, you're, you're such a kind person. You're always giving more than you should. You're always like, you know, you don't do a lot for yourself. And and I recognized that and I said, okay, I, this has to be fixed. So, you know, I I saw the spiritual cure. Okay. I, I took the spiritual route. And I want to say back when I was 20, let me say 23 years old, I decided to become a Christian and, and give my life to the Lord. And because I recognized I had some problems that really needed to be fixed. And I said, I'm going to do it this way because I was kind of brought up this way a little bit, but I wasn't taught everything that I really needed. And as a matter of fact, some of the upbringing is what led to the problems anyway. You know, I had a good pastor. He was a really kind man and worked really hard. And But one of the things he said was, you know, he would take me on the side and he would say, he would say, Alfonso, you, you are a great kid. And as long as you continue to help your family and take care of your mom, God's going to bless you. And as a young person, I I was always looking for some kind of acceptance and some like place to belong. And and I wanted God to do something for me. And, and so I said, okay, well, I got to do that. And if I do that, God will bless me, right? So that's why I ended up working hard and doing all the crazy things I did. Because as a kid, I really wanted like God to bless me. I didn't realize at the time that I had already been blessed and I didn't have to do all of those things. The teaching was off, right? Great people, don't get me wrong, teaching was off. And I realized that, recognized that years and years and years later. But but then the damage had been done. I had I had become so weak mentally from this that I just couldn't see my way out. It caused financial issues. Really, it was blocking my path. It was seriously blocking and hindering my path. So I I began going to church and stuff like that. And what I'm saying, I'm not knocking anybody. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about what is it that is hindering you? I'm sharing with you what, what hindered me and how I fixed it. Okay. So I began to read and study the Bible and go to church. And the more I read and studied the Bible, the more and more and more I started to drift away from church because I began to see things in the church and experience things in the church that was preventing me from living the life that I was really destined and designed to live. There, there were hindrances. and I'll get into them in a later show. I might even write a book about it, but they're deep and they're personal. And I think these are the things that are stopping a lot of people from either wanting to go to church or even wanting to believe that there is a God because it just seems like there's so much chaos. And sometimes there is. But as I began to read and study, I began to drift away, drift away. And and I got closer and closer to God through just reading and studying it on my own to the point now where I don't attend a physical church. I attend a church online because I found a church in a country that teaches the Bible the way that I believe that it's been designed to be teached. And when I found this church, my life changed. My whole entire life changed. And because I was seriously getting what I needed to get to the next level, not just for myself, but also to be a blessing to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that I help now managing millions and millions and millions of dollars. Had I not done this, I would not be in the position that I'm in now. And what I did is I found my strength through reading and studying and just being apart from everyone and just being by myself and studying and trying to figure out what is it that I'm supposed to be doing with who 
how, where. And those things came to me. And <laughs> years, I've, I've been in business for years, but there's a right way to do business and there's a wrong way to do business. And God just kind of began to show me all these different things. And and over time, my my direction, I got my direction, right? So we started Brightree. It was, we had Fresh Start Financial. We had HG Capital Advisors. We had all these different companies. And we were doing well, but I wasn't helping enough people. I, I really wasn't helping people to the level that I was built and designed to help them. And some of you may know the story, but when I when I took my investment exam, I barely passed it. It was hard. And not too many people pass this fiduciary exam. It, it's kind of hard. You got to study for a long time. You got to remember a lot of stuff. Um, and I passed it. And I said, I got in the car and I almost cried and said, you know, God, I haven't been a good person lately. I don't even know how I passed. And he said, well, I didn't help you pass for you. I help you pass for the people that you're going to be helping. I need you to help people. I need you to do this partner with people and the savior complex thing I had, you know, a lot of times you really want to help people, but the way God was framing it to me was not necessarily helping people, but partnering with them. Like he has partnered with me over the years. We are partners and partakers in this thing together. You know, a lot of people talk about serving and serving and serving. And I do believe in serving, but I do believe in serving in your gifts and in your capacity to humanity. Not necessarily serving just for the purpose and the sake of serving. Because a lot of times when you're just serving for the sake of serving and trying to look good and trying to like be blessed, a lot of times you're wasting your time. You're sacrificing unnecessarily. You're sacrificing your gifts. You're sacrificing your talents. And God is saying, I don't need you doing that. I need you doing this over here. But because we're so scared and we don't know where to go and we don't know what to do, we just take the path of least resistance. And I stated before, the only thing at the end of the path of the least resistance is crumbs. The only thing that's on the end of the path of least resistance is crumbs. Okay. So I had to change. And as I began to study and work, I began to meet right people, start a bright tree, you know, opened my own investment firm. It was hard. It was very, very hard. But for a year, about a year, I just lived on savings. No one knew what I was going through. No one knew anything. Put a smile on my face, went to work, cried behind the scenes. <laughs> you know, paid bills on time. I mean, we didn't miss a bill. We didn't miss a mortgage payment. We didn't do any of that. Why? Because I had put together a plan. I had a plan and that plan was able to see me through those darkest moments when I opened up this firm. Wasn't going to church at the time. And uh, I think I might've, I think I might've been, but then after that I quit uh, and then just began to like, just really get to myself and study because that's what it took. And, and I did. And next thing you know, we're sitting here and my income started climbing slowly. And then it just all of a sudden, and the reason why my income took off is because I was making a bigger impact in the lives of other people. I was growing their wealth. I was growing their money. You know, as an investment advisor, that's that's your goal. It's, it's to help your client become as wealthy as you possibly can, teaching them the right strategies, putting the right strategies in place, you know, being there for them, helping them through the tough times, helping them through loss, helping them through success. It's It's all there. And to me, that savior complex was my greatest weakness. And sometimes now the biggest problem I have is I have to realize when people are wasting my time, when I'm trying to partner with them and they're not pulling their fair share of the load, I have to part ways because that is an unhealthy relationship. I had to learn how to set boundaries on these things so that I'm not being abused. And I recently moved the company to Las Vegas last year, and it was one of those things where I felt myself sacrificing unnecessarily because, again, that savior complex thing was creeping back in. I felt like I had to be here for everybody, for everybody. You know, what if I left and, you know, people needed me and they needed me here and so on and so forth. And the Lord spoke to me and said, look, what is your number one objective? That's to make your clients as wealthy as you possibly can. You can't do that waking up at three o'clock in the morning, being tired all the time because you had to get up so early. Now you got to stay up late because people can't come in. And even if you're here, they can't get to the office. They won't take time off of work to come see you. And you're like taking late appointments and you've been up early in the morning. It's not working. And I said, you're absolutely right. It's not working. I'm killing myself. I'm, I'm mentally, 
I'm, I'm getting into a position where I'm mentally un, I'm, I'm happy and unhappy physically. I'm unhappy mentally. I'm unhappy spiritually. I'm un, unhappy with my relationship. Everything was going wrong. It was all going wrong. And I said, I, you know what? Well, I wouldn't say it's going wrong. It was going in the wrong direction. Started heading that way. So I had to make a change. And, and, and again, I always have to fall back on what is my objective? Am I fulfilling my purpose? Am I fulfilling my mission? And I'm just giving you a sneak, a, a snippet into my mind and into my life and the things that I have to deal with. And I'm sure you folks are dealing with similar things that are blocking you from achieving all of the success you could ever have in life. Again, if you are a Christian, you are blessed to be a, a blessing to others, right? You, you are you are gifted and enabled to make a difference and impact in the lives of other people. Now, again, you also have to provide for yourself too, because there is something righteous about that. Taking care of yourself first, and then you can take care of others. And so if you have something that you're struggling with, I just, I just highly encourage you to think about the direction that you want to take to get that solved, whether it's going to be you seeking professional help to get that solved, or spiritual help to get that solved. But if you do go the spiritual route, there's a lot of things that are on that pathway that can hinder you, that can disturb you, because I will tell you, not everybody who says, I believe, are doing the things that they need to do. Again, nobody's perfect, and I'm not trying to judge anybody. But what I'm saying is, you're going to have to stay focused, no matter which route you take, whether it's the spiritual route or the professional help route, you're going to have to stay focused in order to get where you want to be. Now, for me, the reason why I also took the spiritual route, because I I know this, the more successful a person becomes, the more tempted they are with things. Because now you have resources and you have the ability to do whatever you want. You can have whatever car you want. You can buy the nicest house. You can travel and go all over the world. You can do all kinds of things. But just because you can afford to do something doesn't necessarily mean that you should. And you're going to have to have a proper plan in place. And so if you're out there and you look, what I'm sharing not only will help you get to the 3%, but it will help you stay in the 3%. It's one thing to become successful, but it's another thing to stay successful, right? And as a man thinketh, so is he. Whatever is in your heart, that's that's what you're going to do and be. And you become super successful, pride can get to you, arrogance can get to you. You go from <laughs> having a savior complex to now having a what they call a messiah complex. <laughs> and that's even worse, I think. You know, uh, yeah, that's even worse, you know. And but we just want to have balance in everything that we that we do. So I want to encourage you, and no matter what, that you can do it, set your mind to it, set your action plan, get your game plan in place have a strategy and let's get it. I mean, let's, let's do it. And if you think that you want someone to look at the financial side of things for you, which I think you should get on my schedule, get on my calendar and let's make this work. Let's partner. Let's become a great team and let's make this happen. Don't get caught up on the fees. Don't please don't. I just did a show about it called the 1% myth. A lot of people do get caught up on fees. That, that's the biggest thing that's hindering them. Like, I don't want to pay anybody money. I can do this myself. I can shoot a basketball. You can shoot a basketball. But I don't think nobody's lining up to pay us money like they did Michael Jordan to shoot basketball. Like, it's not happening. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you're doing it well. I'll put that out there again. Just because you can do something does not mean you are doing it well. If you are doing it well, kudos. You're probably not listening to me anyway if you're doing it well. <laughs> you're probably somewhere doing something else like shoot. But check out my previous shows, book an appointment with me through my assistant, Beverly, and let's make this happen, y'all. All right. So until next time, everybody, one, two, three, let's get it. This is the podcast factory.com.